Good afternoon and welcome to St Michael and All Angels Parish Church for our Christingle service. My name's Callum, I'm the vicar here at St Michael's and I've been joined by Joe, who helps out with some of our youth work and children's work for our service this afternoon. And it's great to be here with, with you, not in person though. Normally we'd have this church filled twice of, of, with many of you and it would be the most magical time. Today we're going to try and make it magical through the media of uh, television. We know it's not the same being online. Uh, I'm certainly missing all of you and the chaos of Chris Dingle. Um, Christmas Eve has never felt quite so peaceful uh, <laughs> since I've been in Bramwell, not having two <laughs> services full of hundreds of people. So uh, you really are missed and hopefully next year we'll be back to our Chris Dingle services in person. I can't wait to welcome you back and I know Joe can't either, but I hope uh, our online service will make do this year. In our Christingle services, we celebrate Jesus, who is the light of the world. He's the new life and hope in our world, something that we need so much of at the moment. But we also raise money and awareness of the Children's Society, who bring light to the lives of young people who are suffering across this country. And I'll say a little bit more about the Children's Society later on. Today, in this digital Christingle service, we have the opportunity to celebrate Jesus, the light coming into the world, overtaking darkness, and even the opportunity to share that light with others. So all the words are gonna appear on the screen, hopefully, and uh, you can join in. And when we have some carols, you can even sing because you're at home with your family. So hopefully somebody's gonna appear here. Christ has brought us out of darkness. To, to live, live in, in his, his wonderful, wonderful light. light. We're going to have our first carol now, O Little Town of Bethlehem.
So we come together at our Advent wreath now. We've been lighting this for the last few weeks in Advent. Um, and we light a candle for each Sunday. And as I light each candle, the light from my candle stays lit. The light just doubles each time. Each time there's more and more light. So we're going to say together, Jesus, light of the world, shine in this place. Jesus, light of the world, shine in our hearts. Jesus, light of the world, shine in our lives. Jesus, light of the world, shine in all the earth. Amen. I'm sat here at the crib in church and uh, if you look closely you'll see there's one person missing. We haven't yet placed Jesus into the crib. That's something we'll do later this evening at our midnight service. But I guess it's slightly symbolic in that Jesus is missing from the crib and there are times in our lives where maybe Jesus might be missing too. Those times where we fail to love someone, maybe we don't love our brother or sister uh, as much as we should. Maybe we forget to uh, love our parents the way we should love them, or we don't love our neighbour over the road or our friends as much as God tells us we should. And in those times, God says, say sorry. And it's important that we say sorry for those times where we get things wrong, where we fail to put Jesus at the centre of our lives. So we're going to do that now by saying sorry to God and be reminded that he forgives us and he loves us. So the words are going to appear on the screen. Join in with me as we say sorry to God. Father God, we are sorry for the things we say and do which make you sad and for not thinking of others before ourselves. We are sorry for the times when we have seen people in need and ignored them or walked on by. Please forgive us and help us to love you and other people so we may share your light with others and bring hope to the world. Amen. The story of Christmas is supported by the story of Easter. Without Easter, the story of Christmas isn't complete. And the story of Easter, of Jesus upon the cross, Jesus rising from the tomb, is the story of forgiveness, of love and of peace. And so may God, who loved the world so much that he sent his son to be our saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in this, his world, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're now going to have a bit of a story and it's a new story that I found earlier this year and actually I think it's probably one of my favourite children's stories. It's called There's a Lion in My Nativity. Welcome to you, to our class Christmas play. My name is Sam, your narrator today. And I'm playing Mary, the star of the show. Everyone comfortable? Ready? Let's go. I stroll on the stage past the tall Christmas tree, the whole room of parents all looking at me. Hey, who put that there? right in the way. Why is there a tent in my class Christmas play? Ladies and gentlemen, that Christmas time, the high king of heaven left riches behind and like God was camping with no pride or fuss, he came down from heaven and lived among us. This is my big scene, just angel and me, fear and surprise, I'm a new mum to be, but wait, there's no way Mary had that at home, so why has the play script included a phone? No matter the distance, whatever the place, with video calls we can chat face to face. We might think of Jesus a bit like a phone, showing us God and making him known. Signpost, check. Luggage, check. 
we're on our way. Let's nail the travelling scene of the play. Riding to Bethlehem on a, wait, what? Who thought a lion was part of the plot? When you see a lion, you think of one thing. Strength, might, his power. He's called Jungle King. So don't think of Jesus as just weak and small. He's king of the universe. He rules it all. Our journey is over. Next scene is a win. Say it together. No room at the inn. Oh no, why is the audience starting to laugh? Since when did the innkeepers have extra staff? The more you have power, it's generally true. The more you get others to do things for you. But not so King Jesus. He made and rules the earth. Yet just like that waiter, he offers to serve. The famous birth scene with the spotlight on me and Joseph and baby too, just us three. So what's she doing? Did she not rehearse? Everyone knows that this scene has no nurse. Don't be surprised. Yes, a nurse does belong. She helps and she heals since she knows what is wrong. Well, so too with Jesus who came to fix sin, the ways that we choose not to treat God as King. I exit the stage now for shepherds and sheep, but look through the curtain, we'll still take a peep. Tea towels, headdresses, each has a crook. Hang on, that's a mop that she's holding there, look. The effect of our sins like a stain we can't see and can't be scrubbed out, not by you, not by me. So Jesus was born to do what we can't do, to clean up our hearts and to make them brand new. Now it's the big scene with actors galore, dozens of angels out there on the floor. But this scene does not involve having to float. So why is my nativity boasting a boat? If we know we're in danger, please save me, we shout. Then we trust in the person whose arms lift us out. Like a lifeboat that races to you through the waves, here's our rescuer, Jesus. He seeks and he saves. I'm back in the stable, but this is all wrong. It should be the wise men who bring gifts along. So what's there to learn then, since clearly tonight there's more to all this than there seems at first sight. The best gift you'll get has no wrapping or tag. It's not from a shop and won't fit in a bag. The best gift is Jesus who says, be my friend and let me invite you to life without end. I used to think that I was the star, me alone. I never once asked why the manger's a throne. But now I can see that it's just the right thing. I'm not the star. It's the rescuing king. Let's clap all the actors as they take their bow. The nurse with the waiter, the lion standing proud. Tent, phone, throne, boat, mop, gift out on the floor. So now can you tell me, what were they all for? Thank you, Callum, for that amazing story. It's wonderful to hear of all the things that we can see Jesus as. And when we want to think about what Jesus was like and is like, we can read the words in the Bible. So we're gonna have a Bible reading from the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness 
and the darkness has not overcome it. So we're here up at the high altar uh, for our talk section of our service and actually this year what we're going to do is we're going to put our Christingles together. We're going to show you how to make a Christingle because normally if we were here in person you'd have been given a Christingle on the way in. So I'm sorry that uh, we've not got that gift for you this year but if you've been super organised and got all the different elements to make a Christingle uh, here in your home you can make a Christingle along with us. Um, and so the things you're going to need are an orange. You're also going to need some red ribbon or some red tape. We've got some red tape here. Uh, you're going to need a small bit of foil. So uh, go and steal that bit of foil that's meant to be going around the turkey. You can use that for your Christingle first. Uh, you're going to need four cocktail sticks or equivalent. Um, I'm not sure what an equivalent of cocktail stick would be though. No, kebabs. Perhaps skewers, they might be good if you're doing a big Christingle, maybe. Um, you want some dried fruit or sweets. So for those of you that are boring and unexciting and on diets, yes, you can have your dried fruit. For those of you a bit more exciting. Diets at Christmas, no sweets. Sweets. We've got them in glasses because obviously we're trying to be COVID safe. Um, and you want a candle. So we've got little candles, but you could have really big candles if you wanted. Uh, and also you're going to need something to light your candle from. So it says matches on our list, but uh, we've got a candle lit already. Uh, so we're going to light them from that. If you haven't got all those different elements, but you still want to join us, we're going to set you a scavenger hunt. So each time we come up to a new ingredient and how we're going to use it, um, we're going to tell you to go and find something that's fairly similar in your house. This is feeling a little bit like a kind of a kitchen show a cooking show or even yeah. Blue Peter. Yeah, we're going to get one that's already done, right? Yeah, no, I haven't already made one. So I haven't got one that's here, here that was made earlier. We better um, do a good job then. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't have won my Blue Peter bad. Although I did win <laughs> one once. Did you? I did, yes. I complained <laughs> that they got something wrong and I got a Blue Peter badge for it. Why does that not surprise me? So what do we need first? So first we need our orange. Okay, uh, do you like oranges? Um, yeah, I like oranges. Great. Yeah. So if you've not got an orange at home, you need to run around your house and find something that is either orange. So if you've still got your pumpkin from Halloween and it's looking orange, you might want to use that. Um, or something that is round. Yes, like a mince pie. A mince pie, or yeah. Or a Terry's chocolate orange, which is both round and orange. Yeah. Hey, we could use chocolate oranges next year for our Christine girl. all the Christine. Although that would be slightly expensive. I'll be there for both of them. It'll be fine. So what does the orange represent, Joe? So the orange represents the world. It looks like the world, doesn't it? Apart from it being orange. Yeah. Um, and it represents that God made the world. So we're recognising God making the world out of pure love. Did you realise that um, God loved the world into being? That's what the Bible said. Ah. He didn't just make it one day in his science laboratory, but he made it out of love. Yeah, I think when you bake a cake out of love, it tastes nicer than when you just throw one together. Interesting, yeah. Mm. So hopefully you've got your orange, and if you haven't got your orange, hopefully you've got something that's orange or something that's round. Round. Yes, do you like oranges though, Cal? I'm not a massive fan of an orange. In fact, I can't no. remember the last time I ate an orange. Really? So I'm not going to be eating this orange, but the next element I might struggle to not eat. Okay, what's that then? So we're moving on to the sweets or dried fruit if you're a dried fruit person. So we've got our sweets here. So we're gonna put a few sweets on each of our cocktail sticks. And the sweets represent God's blessings in the world. So are there any blessings in your life that you're thankful for and maybe even want to say thank you to God for, Jane? Oh, yes. Yes, I mean, most years that would be really easy to answer, I think. But this year, perhaps it's a bit harder for us to think about our blessings. Yeah. But mine's definitely to do with my family. Yeah. And um, they're a blessing. Uh, my church community. Yeah. Not it's seeing hard. enough of them. Yeah. It's hard, isn't it? Talking whilst also doing something else. Yeah, it's really difficult. So my church community, definitely. Um, my health I think we all are glad when we're healthy at the moment um, in this strange world that we're in where we're always wondering if 
the cough that we've just had is because we've eaten sweets too fast yeah. or something more sinister. So lots of things are blessings. So uh, just going back to our scavenger hunt as we continue to pierce some sweets onto cocktail sticks. Uh, if you haven't got any sweets in your house, then actually you need to go out to um, a supermarket and buy some. You can't have Christmas without sweets. No, it's a lot. Um, in our kitchen, there's a box of celebrations which have a sticky note on it saying, uh, not for Callum, for Christmas. <laughs> and I keep crossing out the, the not um, and moving it. To, <laughs> but um, if there's a box like that in your kitchen, I think you can probably go and get it. But uh, if you haven't got sweets and you can't go out to the supermarket, um, go and find something that you absolutely love and treasure, like a teddy bear or something like that. Do you have to stick a thing in you your You don't have bear? to stick a thing through it. But That's once right you then. have safely pierced your sweets or dried fruit onto your cocktail sticks, you're gonna place them in your orange. And what we tend to do is place them every quarter. So on the 12, three, six, and nine o'clock points if it was a clock. And that's to remember that God's blessings are everywhere. They're at, uh, in all places, in all different times, but they're all around the world. As we were talking about this, actually, I asked Jo uh, what her blessings were, and it took her a little while <laughs> to come did. up with them. It's um, been a funny year though, hasn't it? It has, <laughs> but actually, if you ask someone what they're thankful for, they don't generally turn around and say something straight away, they have to think about it. Because actually, whilst there are lots of blessings in the world, whilst there's lots to be thankful for, there's also a lot of wrong in the world. And the world isn't particularly bright at times. Mm. Sometimes the world can be really dark and we've experienced a lot of that this year. Um, things where we as humans haven't cared for people, where we haven't loved people, where we haven't loved the world. And it's in those actions that we've made the world a dark place. What are some of the things that make the world a dark place, Jo? Terrible things. Uh, I was thinking about this and of course we go to war and we go to famine and we go to, um, you know, lots of those big things, but perhaps they don't feel like they're part of your everyday life. So for me, one of the big darknesses is when we start treating other people as things and not giving them the love and the care that they deserve and that God would want us to be giving them. I think that's a real yeah. dark place to be. Definitely. And so it might seem odd to be thinking about those things, but it leads us very nicely into the next ingredient. So hopefully uh, you've got your sweets or that thing that you absolutely love. And as we think about those things that make our world dark, that make our world not a very nice place to be, we come to hold the candle. Do you have lots of candles in your house? I have lots of candles. I got some very exciting remote control candles wow. this year. One of the things I love about Christmas, and especially about St Michael's, is they know how to use candles, candles. at church. You need lots of candles. Yeah. David Taylor, our verger, usually goes absolutely nuts at Christmas um, <laughs> with all the candles. Um, and I know that he's getting excited for lighting lots of them in the next couple of days, or even tonight. Tonight. Um, but in our world in a dark place, the reason why Jesus comes is he comes to make it a better place. He comes to brighten it, to make it lighter. And so whilst we have Jesus here, uh, you might think before Christmas, they're two separate things. At Christmas, the world and Jesus come together. So what we're going to do is we're going to place our candles in our orange. But to do that, we've got to um, what I call the annual massacre of the oranges. We've got to massacre our oranges. Um, and <laughs> what we're like going to do is we're going to take a sharp knife. So make sure that if you're doing this, if you're following us along, that there's someone responsible with you. It's really important because knives are sharp and they shouldn't be played with. And we're going to make the symbol of a cross in our orange. And you do that by pushing down one way uh, and then crossing over and doing it again. Uh, and so we're not going to say much because we're concentrating. The oranges smell delicious, they don't do, they? They do, don't they? Good on Mr Sainsbury's. I hope your chocolate orange smells as nice if you're doing it with one of them. Oh, can you imagine cutting a cross in a, in chocolate, a chocolate orange? orange. Yeah, it's that. perhaps not the safest thing. Go for the mince pie. That will um, smell nice. So we've made the, the cross in our Christingle. Yep. Um, and now what are we going to do, Joe? So we're going to take a bit of foil. 
that bit you've ripped off the turkey. I hope you didn't take much because mum's going to be really cross. But here's the bit that I've got and it's to represent us. It doesn't look very like me. Well, it's sparkly. I'm sparkly. So why are we wrapping cling film around, uh, not cling film, foil? Don't, don't use cling film. Why are we wrapping foil around the bottom of our candle? So what candles do, they give off light and foil is sparkly it's reflective it's like a mirror surface isn't it and it reflects that light and we reflect the light of christ brilliant so if you're at home and you don't have a candle and you haven't gone and stolen some foil you might want to go and find something that gives out lights you might want to go get a lamp or a torch or something that that makes light and you might want to also go and get a mirror something that reflects that light and so when you've wrapped your foil around your candle you want to place it into that cross that we've just made in our orange. And uh, if you've done it like me, all the juice flows out ah. everywhere. So hopefully the head server isn't going to get cross at me because hopefully it's all landed on uh, the mat and not the uh, white altar cloth. Uh, but what you should be able to see, uh, and I don't know if you can see it properly, is that candle isn't moving. That calid candle is fairly... Uh, firmly fixed into the orange. If it's not, push it in a bit further or perhaps get your responsible person to help you with that. And it's really important because sometimes we might not think of Jesus being firmly fixed in our world, but in his human life, he experienced everything the whole of humanity has experienced. So um, you may have never been a refugee, but for those people that have been refugees, Jesus was a refugee too. In the early days of his life, he had to flee from his home country to a place of safety in Egypt because Herod wanted to kill him. Jesus suffered the loss of a family and even friends. Jesus went hungry. Jesus uh, went thirsty. Uh, he's experienced all those different things that we as humanity, as one people, have experienced. And that's really important. Uh, and that's what we remember with the candle being firmly fixed in our oranges wonderful so what comes next what comes next we uh we need to remember why it's important that jesus came at christmas and then we we have to jump ahead a bit for that don't we to remember yeah. easter we do and the easter story so are we going for the red tape next yes so the last bit is the red tape so we've got red tape here you might have a red ribbon at home uh, or you may need to find something that is just red just red there's lots of red things in houses there at definitely Christmas. are yeah even lots my red, red jumper things. but it's yeah. not in your house it's on me um, and yeah. so what we're going to do is we're going to place a band of red tape all the way round the edge of our Christingle. and the reason why we're doing that is because the colour red is really important. Can you remember another time of the year, Joe, where you see lots of things that are the colour red? No. February. February. Or I, that's what I meant to say, February. Oh, Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. The, the problem is I drop. don't see a lot of things <laughs> so, <laughs> red. Valentine's Day is a day all about love and everything is usually red because colour, the colour red is the colour of love. And so what we've done is we've made an endless circle of red around our orange to remind us of God's love, to remind us that God loves the world and everything in it. But it also reminds us of, it, of the Easter story in that everything was going wrong with the world despite the fact that Jesus was in the world. Jesus, the light of the world, had come into the world and yet things were still wrong. And so it took Jesus' death upon the cross to make things different, to change things, to make the world a brighter place. And so we push, put this red ribbon around it to remember that Jesus died for us because he loves us. He loves us and nothing will ever overcome or defeat his love. Wonderful. 
So that is our Chris Dingle put together. So if you've made a Chris Dingle at home, do take a picture and share it with us. We'd love to see your Chris Dingles. And if you haven't, and you've gone on the scavenger hunt and you've got all sorts of things lying in front of you now uh, yeah. that represent your Chris Dingle, again, do take a picture and share it with us. We We'd love to we see definitely want those to see them. Chris Dingle, or alternative Chris Dingles. Or alternative Chris Dingles. So the only last thing to do is to light our Chris Dingles. Yes. So I'm going to let you go first. Okay. I'm going to read a bit of text that we have in front of us. It says this. Even though Jesus died, the candle flame still burns brightly because Jesus came alive again, showing that the love of God was deeper than all the hatred of the world and the peace of God was stronger than the violence of the world and the light of God was brighter than all the darkness of the world. That's the story the Chris Dingle tells. The story of the light and love of God. Jesus came to bring the light and love of God to every dark corner of this world. And so we're going to see a short video now from the Children's Society. Thank you for sharing the light of Chris Dingle and helping disadvantaged children and young people in the darkest of situations. We've all been through a lot this year, and unfortunately, disadvantaged young people have been some of the hardest hit by the pandemic. For the young carers who have been shouldered with more responsibility than ever. The young people who have experienced devastating effects on their mental health. Or the missing children who have nowhere to shelter for the night. We need your kindness more than ever. Together, we can rekindle the hope inside these vulnerable children and provide the safety net they so urgently need. Your Chris Dingle donations will help run vital services all across the country, helping children through one-to-one -one counselling and dedicated project workers. You can guide the most vulnerable children to a brighter future. The kindness of Chris Dinglers, like you, will help bring hope and optimism to the lives of young people. Please give what you can today and let children in this country know just how much they matter. Thank you.
So although the world feels dark sometimes, we've got the light, the light of Christ. And while we have our lit Chris Ingalls, we're going to join together in some prayers. Lord Jesus, bringer of light to this world, we pray that your light would shine in us and that as a community, we may reflect your light. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. Lord Jesus, bringer of light to the vulnerable, we pray for those in need of your care and compassion. Shine your light on those who feel they are living in darkness. May we bring strength to the weary, joy to the downhearted and peace to those who are restless. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord Jesus, bringer of light to children and young people. We pray for young people who are in dark situations. Shine your light on those who feel hopeless, afraid and without hope, that they may have a brighter future. May we look to your example, not excluding anyone because of age, but accepting all those we meet. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord Jesus, bringer of light to the helpers, we pray that you would be with those who support young people. Shine your light on teachers and carers in our community. May they know your blessing upon them. We pray for the work of the Children's Society and for those who support their work with vulnerable young people. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Amen. Amen. So we're going to join together in the prayer of the church, the family prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Earlier on in our service, uh, Jo lit the Advent wreath, and she talked about how as she lit one candle, uh, the other one didn't go out, but things just got brighter. If I was to extinguish my candle again, that might represent some of the difficult things I faced this year. But if I light it, if I put it near Joe's candle, so it comes back again. The candles don't just represent Jesus, but they represent us too. We are the light of the world because Jesus comes and lives in us. And so our job is to be the light in the world, to change the world, to make the world a better place. And if you think, oh, I'm not good enough to do that, I can't do that, you're telling yourself a lie. Because God loves you and God wants to change the world through you. And sometimes it might be like this candle burning really brightly, doing lots of amazing things. Other times it might feel like you've gone out because things are just too difficult. When things are difficult, get closer to someone, obviously observing social distancing at the current time, and then now they're like, to reignite you. And when you see someone struggling, hold your light near to them, that you might keep them from darkness in their difficult days. I hope that analogy works, even though we get social distancing. Do you know what I mean if it doesn't? And so as we think of ourselves being the light of the world, as we use the illustration of a Christingle for us being the light of the world, so we're going to pray and the words are going to cover us up uh, on the screen. Lord Jesus, light of the world, I hold this Christingle as a sign of your love. May we share your light in the darkness. The candle planted deep within the world as a sign that you made your home among us and lived with the poor and neglected. May we share your light in the darkness. The ribbon wrapped around the earth, the sign of your love shown on the cross. Enfolding the whole world in your love. 
may we share your light in the darkness. The fruits and sweets, signs of all the good things you have made, given to us, that we might share them fairly, so everyone can have enough. May, may we share your light in the darkness. So we pray together. Lord Jesus, light of the world, as I hold this Christingle and think about your great love for me, help me to take this light out into the world and to share your love with others, especially those who need it most. Amen. And have our fun help, joy to the world. We go in peace to share the peace of God with all we meet. We go in love to share God's gift of love with the world. We go in the light of Christ to shine as lights in the world. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us in our online Christingle service this year. We hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you want to know more about the Children's Society, you can visit their website, uh, which is appearing on screen now. We normally take a collection for the Christingle Society for all the work that they do. Um, and obviously we can't do that in person. But if you wish to donate to the Children's Society, you can do it in two ways. The first of which is you can go to our online Christingle donation page. Uh, again, the link is appearing on screen now and there's even one of those funny codes that you can scan with your phone camera and it will take you directly there. Um, or you can put some money in an envelope through our church letterbox um, and we'll make sure that that gets to the right place. The letterbox is completely secure so you can drop some money in there, it gets checked every day. Uh, and any donations towards the Children's Society we're greatly thankful for. Uh, throughout December I attempted to run 10 kilometres every day to raise some money for the Children's Society. I got up to daily, day 12 and uh, my back gave way and I was struggling to move. Um, I'm hoping to try and get out uh, again over the Christmas season to just kind of finish it off but I'm just about mobile again and it's not hurting so thank you for all your prayers thank you again for all your support we've nearly raised three thousand pounds through that so uh, I feel really bad that I've not managed to complete my challenge between by Christmas Eve um, but I am still really grateful for all your generosity and we'll make sure I do complete 24 10 k's um, in respect of all the money that's been given but whatever you're doing this Christmas, both from Joe and from me, have a fantastic Christmas. It will be slightly different, but it's still a celebration that Jesus has come into the world, that he is the light of the world, and he is making this world a better place.
Take care. God bless. Bye.